Hey family, Pastor Artie here with Pointing the Way in the Word. You know, as we come to a close of the Passion Week, we uh, will take time tomorrow on Good Friday and then again on Sunday to celebrate the life of a 33-year-old young man who came and was born of a virgin who committed his life to sharing the good news of God here on earth to those of us who are wretched sinners. <laughs> and he did it all with the knowledge that on Friday, within his own circle, one of his own was going to commit the worst act of treachery that you could ever think of. That was Judas. You know, he went to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and he sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. Now, don't get me wrong. Today, I'd like to have 30 pieces of silver. It's worth a lot of money. <laughs> but would I do that to sell out a friend? I don't think there's any price you could put on a person's friendship or on a person who is in the area of authority, that of a teacher, that of a person of distinguished nature. And I, I count Jesus as that. He was of a distinguished nature. I mean, he was God's son here on earth for us. He was an itinerant preacher. He had no wealth. He had the clothes on his back, the sandals on his feet. He traveled everywhere by foot or on a donkey. He didn't ride in a carriage or a coach. He didn't fly in a private jet. He didn't have limousines. He didn't stay at the Ritz Carlton for $2,000 a night. None of those things. So, it kind of galls me when I hear pastors saying that they have to have these things. When I see the life of Christ, the lowest of the low, really, when it comes to things, possessions. But yet he was the richest one of all of us. He possessed the knowledge and the spirit of God the Father within him because he was. You know, even Pontius Pilate, when he asked if he was the, the Christ, the king, he said, you know, you say who I am, you know, Jesus was just reiterating, you've already said it, so why don't you believe it? And yet Pilate was told by his wife, you know what, don't mess with this dude, leave him alone, because there's nothing wrong in him. And even Pontius Pilate said, you know, well, I don't see anything wrong with this guy, but yet you want me to condemn him to death. So Pilate took the coward's way out. He said, you know what, I'm going to give you a choice. You people choose, Jesus or Barabbas. Barabbas was like that guy that killed the, um, the police officer who had 21 convictions. Nine of them were felonies. Or the Venezuelan who killed Lincoln, Lincoln Riley. You know, just the lowest of the low, the scum of the earth. And he gave the people the choice, and they chose Barabbas. And they were going to send Jesus off to be crucified. To die a thief's death when he stole nothing. He did nothing. He was betrayed. He was stabbed in the back by one man who gave in to a mob rule. And we see that today a lot. You know, I was talking with a friend of mine, a neighbor friend of mine, and we were discussing the Word of God, and we were saying how, you know, being in the church is one of the craziest 
places to be, especially as a pastor. I mean, I spent more time pulling knives out of my back than preaching the gospel because everybody was out to get you all the time. They would listen to every word, and they're still listening to every word. You know, when I speak out against a lot of these pastors who are multi-millionaires and saying how much they have to have, you know, I have to have the latest Gulf Stream to get around. I have to have this. I have to have money. I have to have all these watches. I got to have all these cars, you know. But yet I'm going to get on TV and pull off the biggest smile and say God loves you and he wants the best for you and tar try to teach prosperity to these people. I don't see a Jesus of prosperity. He said, I would that you would prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. I don't know about you, but my soul has never made a penny. <laughs> but yet it's rich in Christ because of the love that he's put there through the death of, and resurrection of his son, Jesus. As we get ready to celebrate the absolute betrayal and backstabbing of Christ, on Friday where he was sold out but yet here was a man who said you know what I'm here to do the Father's will he was here to be obedient it says that he was obedient even unto the death of the cross that's a horrible way to die I'd rather get shot instead of hanging there for hours in the sun cooking hanging bleeding you know they beat Jesus so bad if you were a doctor and you looked at the at the scourging that he took and the beating that he took he was beyond recognition no person ever in history has gone through that kind of beating and disfigurement. You know, I have friends that are in the medical field and they kind of did a study on his uh, anatomy and they were saying they don't know how this man lived. He would have bled out before then, but yet he withstood all that. He withstood the shame, the beating, the scourging, the bloodletting, the name calling, the ridicule, being spit on, having rocks thrown at him, being paraded around the city of Jerusalem as a thief. But yet he did it for you and for me. So that on Sunday we can look and say, thank God he did what he did for us. Because now you and I don't have to be born again because through Jesus we are new creations in Christ we are a new creature we've been given a grace gospel we live in the dispensation of grace because of that very act the 69th week of Daniel ended and now the interim between the 69th and the 70th week are taking place and you and I get to share in that amazing time, the dispensation of grace. So today, family, as you think upon what Jesus did for you, think about this. He only did it for you. Wherever you read where Christ died, you should put your name in there. He died for Artie. He died for Sally. He died for Susie. He died for Jimmy. He died for you guys, specifically. Why? Because he loves you with a never-ending love. It surpasses eternity. Any person who can take a beating like that and still say, I love you, has got to have something in his life that is supernatural. It's given from God. You know, everywhere I read in the Word, I see His love. Everywhere in His Word, I see His grace. 
everywhere in his word. I see his destiny for us is to be with him in heaven. He's prepared a place for you and for me. And there we will be with him forever. And like I said, those of you who think we're going up in a rapture, <sighs> be careful. I was just sharing with my friend too. I look forward to that day. Because that will be exciting. <laughs> to see the Antichrist raise up within the temple. To see the great falling away. I think I'm going to see a lot of Christians fall away. Because, you know, there's a lot of time card Christians this weekend. They're going to punch their clock. Good Friday. I'm at church. Easter Sunday. I'm at church. And then they're going to live like hell Monday through Friday. Or Monday through Saturday. Shame on you guys. He's a life worth living. Every day. May God bless you today. As you start to think of what Jesus did on that cross. What he went through. Think about it. The last time you hit your thumb. Now think about that kind of pain on your back. Multiplied a thousand times over. As your skin is ripped. Your bones are exposed. Your muscle is torn. You're bleeding out. And there's no relief. And then they're going to stick you on a piece of wood and let all those little barbs and, and splinters dig into open flesh. <laughs> After they've driven nails through your wrists and your feet. Wow. It's the most horrible death in the world. But he did it all for you. Tomorrow, think about it. He died on a Friday and rose on a Sunday. It was the darkest day of our lives because our Savior was put to death. Little did we know that like his word when he said that he would raise again in three days and that he made a promise to us, to you and I, that he would not eat again until the kingdom comes. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. He'll celebrate with us at the at the uh, wedding feast at his table family may you reflect on Good Friday may you reflect on all that was done for you you cannot conceive it you cannot experience you cannot suffer the pain of it I hate pain even I won't go through that. But yet, I would lay down my life for you. Because I love you too. So as we get ready to finish out the Passion Week, may God bless you. May He keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you. If you're going to get to a Good Friday service, go to a good Bible-believing church. One that's not all wrapped up in traditionalism or that doesn't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. Try to find out if they really do practice 2 Timothy 2.15 because that's what you're going to need. May you have a blessed weekend and we look forward to doing another video on Sunday where we share the good news of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, Father, for all those people out there, I pray for them. I pray that you would move upon their hearts to just take a moment to think of all that you went through for us. The blood that was shed. The body that was torn. The body that was beaten. Ridiculed. Made fun of. Lots casted. And then hung on a cross. Between two thieves. Because you loved us so much. May they find you in their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys, and I'll talk to you real soon. Bye.